Hey everyone! You are looking at a pretty straightforward PCG graph, but there is one twist on it. It's all powered by this image. And as you can see, I'm sampling the red channel for the balls, the green channel for the trees, and the blue channel for the rocks. And then I am multiplying all of those by the alpha channel to control the scale. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is create a PCG graph. I'll call it PCG underscore landscape textures. And now I'll just drag it into the world and open it up. And I'm going to use a get texture data node. And I need to select my texture, so let me get that into the project, RGBA scribble, and select it in here. And you may receive this error that it's an unsupported texture format. To fix that, you can open up your image and change its compression setting to either vector displacement map or user interface 2D. Save it, and back in the graph, you can unselect and reselect the texture, and that should resolve your error. So now if I debug this, I can change it to the green channel, and this is going to be my trees. There we go. Now, I want this to be a lot bigger in order to cover the entire map, but to do that, I'm going to set the scale up to 1,000. And that is so much larger than 25 that the amount of points I'm going to get from it is a ridiculous amount and would probably crash my editor. So to fix that, I'm going to make the pixels, make the points, a lot bigger. So let's set the pixel size up to 2500. And now I only have four points in this size, so if I expand the scale, it'll be a lot more reasonable. And let's set the Z up to 250 and zero out the location, just so everything's centered. And let me raise this up to show you what we've got. There we go. An enormous sampling of the green texture. So now that I have this, I can create some trees. I'll just do a static mesh spawner and disable debug here. And in the spawner, I'll add a mesh entry and make it just this simple uh, PCG tree mesh. And now if I hook this up, there we go. And there we go. A lot of little trees. Now let's make them look like they're less of a grid. Transform points. Let's set the offset minimax to negative 1250 by 1250. And I picked that number because the texel size is 2500 and 1250 is half that. And let's set the rotation from 0 to 360. And let's make sure these locks are checked and scale from 30 to 50, something very large. And let's hook this on up. And I'll add a projection node. And make the projection target just be landscape height, because I don't want these rotating. They're trees. They should go straight up. And I'll uncheck Project Rotations, and let's see. All right, some rather large trees. So next I want to scale them down, and I'm going to do that by taking the tree density, which, if you look at this, is high density at the center of the band and lower at the edge. And I'm going to take this density and multiply it by the alpha density. So let me... Grab this and I'll show you the alpha channel. So the alpha channel, uh, the brighter it is, it means the more opaque it is, and the darker it is, the more transparent it is. So by multiplying the density of the alpha channel by the density of the trees, it's going to make the trees a lot smaller. And then I'll take that multiplication and output it to scale. So for that, I need an intersection node to combine the points. And I have my intersection node set to multiply. 
You could set it to minimum and it would be a little less aggressive. I just like the effect of multiply. And now I can add a maths op node. Let's add it before the projection. I'll set it to multiply and I'll take scale as one input source and density as another and I'll put it to scale. And there we go. We've got a smaller band of trees looking pretty good. All right, next I will do the rocks. So I'll just, uh, let's see, move this down a little bit, copy all of these and paste it in here. So the rocks I'm going to change to the blue color channel and I will update the static mesh spawner to be rock. And let me project landscape to these. And for that, I will check project rotations again. Since I am rotating them from this projection node, I can undo the rotation in this transform points before. And let's see what we've got. OK, so these rocks are looking OK. Uh, they're a little big. I need to hook them up and apply the density as well. So let's do that now with this intersection node. I'll just connect it to the alpha channel. And that's looking better. Let me make these rocks a little more chaotic and dangerous. To do that, I'll make them skinnier and taller to make them spiky, and then I will rotate them side to side to make them more chaotic looking. So for that, I can add a transform points after I project the rotations. And I will modify the rotation by negative 45, 45, negative 45, 45, and let's do 0 to 360 here as well. And for the transform points beforehand, I can modify their scale, and I'm going to uncheck these locks so that the different scales are not linked to each other, and I'll uncheck uniform scale. And now I'll set the scale min on the x and y to 10 to 20 to make them really skinny, and then 40 to 60 to make them even taller. And let's see the results. All right, they're nice, spiky, and dangerous, like you might see in some sort of badlands environment. I like that. And now the last thing I'm going to do is the little balls. So for that, I will just copy this again drop it in here and move it over and I will select the red channel. Let's change the static mesh spawner to sphere and I'll just use, sure, this sphere works for me. And let me add a color to it. So I'll just use an override material and I made a very simple color and it's just text red. It's basically just outputting red to the base color. And let's hook up the projection target. I can just use landscape height. Landscape doesn't matter because even if you rotate a sphere, it's going to look the same, so it doesn't matter. And let's see what we've got. All right, they are a little large, so I didn't hook up the alpha channel. Now let's see what we've got. All right, so now they are looking a little better, but it looks really weird to have them overlapping these rocks. The rocks are overlapping the trees as well, but I'm less concerned about that since it's less visible. But these spheres, let me fix this. So I'll start off and hook up this point into a difference node. And for the difference node, I'll change it to binary in order to get rid of overlapping points. And now I'll hook this transform points up to that, and let's see what we've got. We've got nothing, and that is because the bounds of this rock points are rather large, and the bounds of the spheres are also rather large, so I have to crank them on down. For that, I'll add a bounds modifier, and I can plug the rocks into the bounds modifier before the difference, and I'll add a bounds modifier right here as well before we send the spheres into the difference. So for this one, I'm going to change it to set and make it negative, let's try negative 40 to 40 to start off with, and 0 to 250. 
And let me debug this and see how well this conforms. It looks like it can be a little wider. So let's make it negative 70 to 70. OK, that's looking OK to me. And now I'm going to make it affect steepness and set the steepness to 1. So let's see what that's done. I see the steepness is 1 on everything, so that's perfect. Steepness 1 will make checks like self-pruning and difference be as precise as possible. So I use it when trying to get my edges sharp. Now let's do the points on the spheres. I'll do set as well, and let's start with negative 40. All right, yeah, that's looking OK. Doesn't have to cover the entire sphere. And let's turn off debug and see how this looks. Good enough. And there you go. You have a texture. You're sampling it to spawn static meshes on the world. Enjoy.